Lesson 44, Using Char Array Strings. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. In this video, we are going to explain how to use strings in the form of char arrays. Although this is the oldest form of string in C++, and we will present more recent versions in upcoming lessons, the char array string is still important because it has been used extensively in legacy code and continues to be widely used. If we take this string of chars and put it into this array, it looks like this. The basic string is just an array of chars with a null character to signal the end of the string. The chars are encoded via the ASCII table, which is available on our website. The actual values in the array look like this. Our first program asks the user his name, takes input from the keyboard, and then outputs it back to the console window. If we execute this program, we are prompted for a name. If we enter zoax.net in the console window, it is outputted back. When we entered zoax.net, the array looked like this. In addition to the eight characters that we entered, the array gets an additional null character. This presents a problem. What if the name we entered was more than nine characters? If we execute the program again, and enter 10 characters for the name, the 10 characters are put into the array. When the 11th null character is added, the program crashes, and an error is reported because we have overrun the array. This is an inherent problem with the fixed length of char arrays. To fix this, we can use the getLine function to truncate the input and stop the overrun. If we change the program to use getLine, like this, and now execute the program, we can enter 10 or more characters, and the program truncates the input at 9 characters plus the null terminator. The remaining characters are discarded. This works, but is not the ideal solution. Ideally, we would like to be able to take in any number of characters, and we will show how to do this with an STL string later. For the remainder of this lesson, we will demonstrate how to perform other operations on char array strings, with additional examples on our lesson page. Most char array string operations are performed by functions in the C string library. The full list of functions in C string can be found on our reference page at zoax.net. Our next program demonstrates how to use the C string functions for getting the length of a string, copying a string, and concatenating a string. Ordinarily, we would need to add a line to include C string like this. However, C string is already included in IO stream, which we have included at the beginning of the file. In this program, we begin with two strings. Then we use the string length function to calculate the length of both strings. Then we dynamically allocate an array of the size of the two strings plus two for the intervening space and the null terminator. Next, we call the string copy function to copy the first string to full name, and we use cout to demonstrate that the string was copied. Then we call the string concatenation function twice to concatenate a space and then the second string. Finally, we output the fully concatenated string and deallocate our array. Executing the program, we see the output for the initial copy and the output for the full concatenation. In our next program, we demonstrate how to use the string comparison function. This function could be used inside of a sort algorithm to sort strings alphabetically. In this program, we just demonstrate some simple comparisons. We begin with an array of four strings containing movie names. Movie count is given the value 4 by a preprocessor directive. Below this, we have two nested loops which run over all four strings. Inside the loops, we call the string comparison function. This function returns an integer value which is less than 0 if the first string comes before the second alphabetically, returns 0 if the strings are equal, and returns a value greater than 0 if the first string comes after the second. Once we get the value from the comparison function, this if outputs an appropriate message. Executing the program, we see the result of each comparison. For our final program, we show how to break a string into tokens. We start with a string with multiple substrings, separated by delimiter characters. Here, the delimiter is a comma. When we call the string tokenizer function the first time, we set the string that we are going to access. The delimiter argument tells the function where to stop at the end of the first substring. Once the delimiter is found, it is replaced by a null. Inside of the while loop, 
we make repeated calls to the tokenizer function to get each successive substring. Every time the tokenize function is called, the subpointer is set to the next substring and the delimiter is replaced by a null character. The while condition checks that the substring pointer is not null, since null is returned when there are no more strings. Executing the program, we see that it lists each of the substrings. This concludes the lesson.